There's no countdown anymore, actually. <laughs> All right, we are live. Welcome to the team, the Prosperity Team Hangout. Tonight is a very, very special one. I'm excited about tonight because tonight it holds a true place in my heart. And I'm not talking about just making money. I'm actually talking about, you know, doing what it takes to make things work in your life, right? We go through life just basically making up excuses and it's it's just it's a natural thing for human beings to walk around with excuse after excuse after excuse. But you know at some point we're gonna run out of out of excuses, right? So tonight what we wanted to do and we, we actually called this uh, hangout tonight, how to use your skill sets to create money out of thin air to fund your business. Because so many people in our business and other businesses that you're doing, you always make up excuses as to why you can't get all in, why you can't upgrade to your products or services, why you, uh, you know, are backed up in bills and you know all these things. But what, what what a lot of people don't realize is that we have skill sets, right? And everybody on this panel tonight is going to share a story with you tonight about the skill sets that they tapped into, that we have, we actually would, were able to tap into to create money out of thin air. Um, you know, so get ready and get your notepads out because the stuff that we're going to be sharing tonight is really going to open up your eyes and make you kind of see things in a different way. And hopefully our goal at the end of this um, training is to help you go out there and create the money that you need in your in your life, in your business, for your family, or whatever it is. There is money out there to be made, and you have what it takes inside of you to actually manifest that if you just really start using your noodles and you know the skill sets that you already have, and just going out there and creating it for you, like we're going to share with you uh, on this hangout tonight. So um, as you can see here, we have Mike Hobbs with us. We've got Madeline Escobar and Paul Hutchings and Scott Zaltef. Zlatef. That's pretty close. Zlatef. Zlatef. Okay. <laughs> I have a habit of butchering everybody. Zoltan name. the Destroyer. That's right. right. <laughs> it's okay. You know, I've I've heard all things. Zalkef actually, and there's no K, so. <laughs> Well, I apologize for um, butching your name there. Happens all the time, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just, I'm just going to go ahead and dive right into it. The reason why I actually went, to, I was actually hanging out with my husband yesterday. And I came to Mike um, yesterday, we were chatting on Facebook, and I said, Mike, if you don't have anybody lined up for this hangout tomorrow night, the Prosperity Team hangout, I want to do it. Because I think this topic is very important and there's a lot of people that need to hear this message because I believe that the information that we're going to share with you can help you. And the reason, the, the, the reason how this all came about was because my husband and I were actually driving in the car and we were having a discussion and you know about all the things that we went through when it came to making money, right? Like we were actually looking at people like waitresses when we go to restaurants and you know people online that complain about no money and just all the situations around us and we were sitting here comparing notes about how we actually created money out of thin air in the years that we've been uh, online and offline you know basically not having a job uh, for the past six going on seven years for us and we were always able to tap into our talents that everybody I believe that everybody has a talent Sometimes they don't even know that they have a talent, right? So as we were sitting here discussing it, I said, you know what? I did that to make money. I did this to make money. I did that to make money. He did this to make money. He did that to make money. All ethical, right? Um, you know, all within, uh, you know, reasonable ways to make money. And I'm not talking about prostitution or drug dealing or anything like that. I'm talking about real ways to actually tap into your money to to your talents to actually create money when you need it right but of course there, there requires some work involved and I'm, we're going to share that a little bit with you today so what I want to do is I actually wrote down five things that I personally did to create money along the years as I've been struggling online to make money and trying to meet 
make ends meet. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, they go paycheck to paycheck, living paycheck to paycheck. I had an experience when I was working online, and we were both working online, where we were actually, um, you know, making money, but living on commission check to commission check to commission check. And we needed to figure out ways to come up with extra money so that not only can we make, make ends meet, but so that we could buy the tools and the systems and the programs and stuff that we needed to educate ourselves to actually make more money in the long term later on. And to pay off some bills and, and actually live a life where we didn't have to be stressed out all the time about where's, you know, how am I going to pay this bill and how are we going to pay the rent next month and all these different things. So. One of the things, and I, like I said, I have five, and actually I have five of my own. I'm going to share three of, of some of the things that my husband did, uh, and then we're going to bring on the rest of the panel so that they can share theirs too. So I'm going to go by through this really quickly. Um, so the first one, when I first started making money out of thin air without having a job, one of the things that I used to do was offline networking events. I had a business partner offline, and we were actually hosting networking events for small businesses so they can come and mingle and you know exchange business cards and kind of network and stuff like that. And it wasn't a lot of money because we actually had an overhead. We had to pay food. We had to pay for the rental spot. We had to pay for the projector and all, everything that we needed to give our presentations. Um, but we were actually doing it for the people, and then whatever was left over, we would split it, and that would be our little side income. And that worked out for a while, but then after a while, it was like, not enough income, right? We needed more. The second thing I started doing is I started, I was gaining weight, and I was having a lot of health issues, and I said to myself, well, you know, let me look online to see, you know, what kind of dietary lifestyle changes do I have to have to make? And so I ran across um, raw the raw food lifestyle, and so I started seeing these raw food classes. And there actually was a um, I was living in New York at the time. There was actually a woman in New Jersey that she was giving raw food classes. It was like a six hundred dollar course. I didn't have the money to pay for it, but I came up with the money to pay for it, and I took that course. And not only did I take took the, not only did I take that course to actually learn how to be healthy for myself and you know to make healthy dishes for my family it was actually to become a certified raw food chef that was the course and so but the thing the great thing about the course was that once you became a certified raw food chef you were actually able to go out there and teach other people how to become certified raw food chefs so what i used to do is I took that what I learned in that class and it was on the class was only like a weekend long it was like an intensive little weekend thing that I went through and I actually developed those skills throughout that weekend and when I came back home not only was I helping myself but I went out there and started helping other people so what did that look like income wise well I started I created a meetup group online right and I started connecting with people in the local area because there's other people out there that want to know how to make healthy meals, make healthy raw food meals and stuff like that. And so I started, te I started teaching them at $125 per person. So let's, let's do the math here, right? $125 uh, times you know, five people per class, that's $625. Uh, I did that twice a month. That was a $1,250 income for myself and all I had to do was work like two or three hours every other weekend to create an extra twelve hundred and fifty dollars in my pocket right simply by sharing the information that I learned with others okay the third thing that I started doing was I started doing children's parties I was actually the one that was dressing up as a clown doing tricks and stuff for the kids because that's what I like to do. I like to have fun with the kids. And so I, uh, so I started putting out flyers and started doing children's, home, uh, children's parties. That was $250 for two hours of me dressing up as a clown, getting hired by these parents that were hiring me to come and do their children's parties. And one weekend, right, it, in one weekend, I would make $250 just for a two-hour uh, party that I did. And I did that, you know, every single weekend for a while, and that was like a thousand dollars a month. That was an extra thousand dollars a month just for two hours of work 
on the weekend. It just took two hours of my time on the weekend. I didn't have any prior skills. It was just something that I tapped into and I said, well, I already do this for my daughter. Why can't I get hired to do this? Let me just put up some flyers. Maybe people could hire me to do it, right? Because I knew how to do it. And so that was an extra thousand dollars a month. The fourth thing was babysitting. Now, you have to check your state when it comes to babysitting um, if you're in the US because every state is different. When it comes to babysitting, you cannot, without a license, you cannot babysit, I believe it's more than six kids in New York. I don't know what it is in your state, but where I was living at the time, it was a maximum of six kids without being certified, without being a certified babysitter. And so I had three children. I put, I made up flyers. I wanted to watch these kids. I needed the extra money. I put up the flyers. I went to the supermarkets. I went to the laundromats, and I put up these flyers. I went to the school of my daughter's school. I talked with the the, the children's uh, organizer or coordinator or whatever you call it, and I put some flyers in his office. I actually tapped into my mind and said, how can I create income with this? Because I, I like watching kids. I know how to watch kids. Like It's not a science to watch kids. right? We do it all the time. We have children. Why not make an income out of that? Because there's parents that actually go to work that need me, right? Because I'm already a stay-at-home mom. They need me. So what I started doing is I put the flyers out, and within that month, I had three people, three children that I was actually watching, and that was like $75 a week. Five, uh, let's see, so $75 a week. Uh, times five, let me see, that was about, times three kids, that was about $900 a month for watching three kids every single day after school. And it was only for a few hours, okay? Um, and finally, the fifth thing that I started doing was I started running errands for elderly people in my neighborhood, right? Because there's elderly people in the neighborhood that they can't walk, you know, they don't have family members or whatever. So you can actually go out and network with the elderly people and say, if you need help, you know, whatever, charge them your little service. I charge $25 an hour to run the little one or two hour errands for them, like going to the bank or going to the grocery and picking up them, you know, milk and bread and all this stuff, or going to pick up their prescriptions from the pharmacy and all these different little things, uh, driving them places, whatever it was. That's what I did, and I had actually, I actually had two people that I was helping, two elderly people that I was helping two times a week, right? That translates into about $400 a month from the two people, right? Now let's talk a little bit about my husband. My husband, he tapped into taxi cabbing. We had a Jeep, right? We, we still, we actually still have this Jeep. Um, it's a Buick Rendezvous. It seats seven people. So he started doing airport runs and tax, doing taxi cabs around the local area. He was making around fifty to a hundred dollars a day doing that. Then he started. We started learning graphic design and web development. That translated into about a hundred dollars to three thousand dollars per customer per client. Then he also he's been doing hair since he was like fifteen. You know doing. Uh, guys, haircuts, shaving, whatever. So he started doing that. That was like $10 per person. So as you can see, just by sharing these stories and going out there and connecting with people and tapping into the talents that you have, you can actually go out there and make extra income to get all in, to make ends meet. So really, you know, after me sharing this and after you hear the rest of the panel tonight, honestly, there really is no excuse. None absolutely none okay so with that being said I want to bring on Mike Hobbs because he actually has a phenomenal story when it comes when it comes to you know him actually going through the situation he's gonna explain it to you now you probably heard his story before maybe if you're new here now this is the first time you hear in his story and his story actually brought me to tears the first time I heard it because well, let me let him tell you the story. Mike, go ahead and take it away. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool, cool. Can you all hear me okay? Just we can fine. hear you just fine, yes. All right, awesome. Uh, well, I'm, I'm super, super excited to be here, you know, with Lisa. And I, and I love, you know, when leaders step up and they ask me, hey, do you want to do the Hangout? Or can I do the Hangouts? Can I do the Hangouts? Because usually I'm, uh, you know, finding people to do them or, you know, whatever. And Lisa's just right on it. You know, in there. Hey, I want to do these hangouts. I want to. I want to get things 
uh, rocking and rolling. Uh, but I can only see Lisa right now, so I want to just make sure you click on. I don't. Know, I want to make sure. One second. Maybe it's just me. Yeah, I see you big on my screen. Okay, you see. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm good. I see Lisa the whole time. And I time. have you clicked anyway, so you. Should... <laughs> nice, nice. All right. So anyway, uh, you know, really what I want to talk about, and and I talked about this story. Um, a little I'm sorry bit. to cut you off, Mike, but I only see your picture, not your video. Um, Nice. Okay, there we go. I still see just your picture. Okay. I see the video. Do you see okay. the video? Yeah, I see him <laughs> live. Oh, I see him now. Okay, good. All right, cool. All right, so anyway, uh, you know, I, I want to talk about, you know, you know, the theme today is obviously creating money out of thin air, but there's a, just a couple things I want to, you know, let you know about my story and where I came from because real quick, you know, sometimes you get on these hangouts and you look at these leaders and you look at Lisa, you look at Paul, you look at Scott, uh, Barbie, and uh, is it Matt? What was Madeline. 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 I can't even read the name. It's so small here. <laughs> but Madeline here. And you look at these leaders and you're like, wow, they, they've made it. They're making money. Uh, in fact, and, and I'll throw an income disclaimer out there, you know, results not typical. You can see average earnings at the bottom of the page. But I had our biggest month in Empower Network. It was a $77,000 month. And that was our biggest month in Empower Network. And, and some people look at that and they're like, well, it's because you have a big list. Or, oh, it's because you, you, know, you have good speaking skills or you do videos very, very well or you know how to do marketing and you're just not telling anyone else. Or you're hoarding all the marketing knowledge to yourself and, you know, and all this stuff. And people have these little stigmas out there and sometimes it really makes me a little mad. It really makes me a little mad, especially when I see people come in this business and they join for like $25 and then they, they can't get a picture in their blog or something and then they quit. And then they quit. When people do that, it really makes me like angry in a way. You know, not really angry at them. It's just inside because of what I had to go through what I persevered through. Someone will join at a $25 level, someone will join even at a $1,000 level, and they'll hit one little tiny roadblock, one little tiny roadblock, and they will just give up. And they will just give up. That really irks me because of what we had to go through. Let me, let me tell you just real quick, you know, how I developed my skills in the very beginning. In the very beginning, when I went online, I did banners. So some people are like, oh, you just know, you get these leads and they flow in. I did banners in the very beginning. Guess what? I spent $8,000 on banners, okay? And I made 5000 but here was the crazy thing. I didn't hook up my autoresponder correctly to the system I was using. So I had zero leads to show for it. <laughs> so I spent eight grand and had zero leads to show for it. And did I and 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 uh, did I quit? Did I quit? Did I go, you know what? I spent eight grand, I made five grand, I lost three grand, I'm three grand in the negative, and then uh, you know, what, what should I just quit now? Should I just quit this whole industry? I didn't hook up my autoresponder right. You know, I actually had someone quit my team once uh, when they lost twenty leads. I don't feel bad because I lost 2,000 leads on that first campaign, 2,000 leads. Uh, then, I, then I moved on. I'm like, okay, now I'm broke. You know, I spent all my money on banners, so what do I do now? So I learned MySpace, and guess what? I built up a ton of different profiles. I kept going and going and going. I got up to 30 leads a day, and I started making money. I started making money. I was so happy, and I was like, yes, I'm making money finally. And then one day, all my accounts deleted. All my accounts deleted. I lost my entire income, all my lead generation from there. I was back to square zero again. Should, did I quit? Did I persevere? Yes, I persevered like an entrepreneur should. Like an entrepreneur should. So where did I go from there? I went to YouTube. So I'm like, okay, so the social media thing is crazy. So I uploaded a video every single day. I followed my mentors. I started generating leads. I had 200 videos on my channel over a year. I started making money again. 
And then guess what? My YouTube account got shut down. <laughs> YouTube account got shut down. I lost all my videos, lost all my leads, lost all my income. Again, did I quit? No, I didn't quit. I didn't. I persevered and I went to Google pay-per-click. I started doing campaigns and you know building capture pages and putting my video capture pages, targeting keywords in different companies and generating a ton of leads and I started making sales and then guess what? My AdWords account got shut down. <laughs> shut down. Square one again. Okay? Broke <laughs> again. Uh, and, and it just really and then I went to Craigslist and uh, I was building a company. I, you know, we did in 30, in 60 days, we recruited in our entire team a thousand people on Craigslist in this company, and I got a you know a five thousand dollar bonus from this company. Uh, they, I made about twenty thousand in two months, and I thought I w I made it. I was like, okay, I'm here. I made it to success. And then the company called me and said, you can't promote on Craigslist. That is illegal. We're taking away your bonus. We are dropping your pay to 40%, and you can no longer market online. You have to do the meetings. And I lost my entire income. Again, did I quit? No, I didn't quit. And I just keep going, and I just kept going. You know, we went, went on to blogging, then we went on to solo ads. And I'm going to tell you right now, I did a solo ad one time that a thousand leads were from like India. Literally. <laughs> I did a solo ad and a thousand leads from India, like one country. I looked at the statistics, it's like, really? One country? Like all of them? You know? So, you know, I've been through it all. You know, we gone through struggles and the biggest struggle, you know, I remember, and, and this is what Lisa was talking about, I remember you know, getting knocked down, just keep getting knocked down, knocked down, knocked down, going through all these different, you know, temporary setbacks is what, you know, Paul Hutchings calls them. And we were broke. We got to the point, we made money a lot of the times and we developed some skill sets because we, you know, were marketing all the time, you know, and I was plugging in. We developed skill sets, but we were broke because of just little temporary setbacks that came in our way. And here's what happened. I remember we swiped our card, you know, it got declined at a grocery store. We were on food orders. You know, we had literally no money. And then my wife was nine months pregnant. I remember she was nine months pregnant. She was, you know, due any time. You know, I think she was, her due date was like in a week or something. Due any time. Um, I was, literally, we were broke. We were two months or I think two or three months behind on our mortgage. And we literally had no money, no money. So I had to think, you know, what can I do to make money out of thin air? What can I do to, to, to just get some money so that we can afford our bills? What can I do? So I decided, you know, hey, what? Well, I just went through this Facebook training. I learned a lot of cool tips. I have some other tips I can add to it. So I'm going to do a webinar and I'm going to sell this course that I created. I just created a real quick course on. Facebook marketing, and I'm going to do this webinar this day. Uh, we're going to sell it for you know 30 bucks, or no, I think it was 25 dollars. And if they shared it on Twitter, it'd be 15, right? So I was going to just just sell this on this webinar. So we get to the webinar. I have it all done. I, I got like 100 people on this webinar registered. I'm ready to do it, and then my wife starts going into having contractions and, and really started hurting. And I was like, what do we do? We literally don't have any money. Do we do the webinar? Do I wait? Do we do the webinar? Or do we go to the hospital? And my wife looked at me and she's like, do the webinar. Do the webinar. I'll be fine. So we did the webinar and we made $750 that night. PayPal to us, and it was enough to get us by at that time. But I tell you this story because we persevered. You know, all these little roadblocks that get in our way, we persevered. Sometimes when people quit over an image not going in their blog, 
or they quit because they don't have the money, you can't tell me that because I have been there and I have persevered through it. You can't tell me that. There's no excuse. You just have to have that winner's attitude, that winner's edge, and never quit. There's a good quote out there, you know, winners never quit and quitters never win. And it is totally true. Uh, I don't care if you're building Empower Network or if you're going to join Empower Network today or not. You know, you just can never give up on your dreams, as Paul would say. Just keep on persevering. Don't give up on little tiny roadblocks. I bet I have gone through more roadblocks than most people have ever gone through in the home-based business industry because I keep going. And I know I'm going to hit roadblocks tomorrow. I know I am. And guess what? I'm going to be here for the long haul. And the beautiful thing is we are here to do it with you. You know, we've been through a lot of these mistakes, and we can help you avoid those by locking arms and being on the same team. You know, we take our mistakes. You can either learn from your mistakes like we did, or you can learn from your mentors. And we are here to be your mentors to help you not hit those roadblocks and have $8,000 mistakes, lose $2,000. Uh, you know, or hopefully you won't go broke to the point where you have to do webinars out of thin air. But if you have to, you will. Use your skill sets and make things happen. So with that, back to you, Lisa. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I mean, see what I'm saying? See? See? <laughs> That's why I get so you know upset like Mike was saying we don't get upset at the people we get we get upset at their actions that they take at, at their mindset that they have because there's so many ways to create money out of thin air I already listed five of my own three of my husband's Mike you know told you his stories and his setbacks that we went through so honestly you know think think we have something in here called a brain and I bet you, you know, who, who was this? Um, Danny Johnson had, had said this one time. If you guys know who Danny Johnson is, she's one of the top um, network marketing trainers out there. She said she used to tell her prospects this um, when they used to make excuses about not having money, right, not having the money to join. And she used to tell them, what if your child was in the hospital, right? or went to the doctor and the doctor told the child or told you the parent that your child had 48 hours to live but the only way that that child can live is if they did some special operation that will make that child live right and and it would cost ten thousand dollars to do that operation what would you do and then they would say, oh, I would do this and I would do that. And she would say, then go do that. Right? So really, honestly, there's no excuse. Because think about it. What would you do if your child was on his deathbed and it cost $10,000 to save their life? Right? Right now, all you do, all, all, not you, maybe, maybe you're not in this situation, I don't know, but a lot of people, they use excuse after excuse after excuse. And honestly, you know, I mean, are the excuses worth it? Is your family worth it? Is you living paycheck to paycheck to paycheck to paycheck worth it, not being able to experience the life that you want to live? Is that worth it? Right? If it's not, then now you know how to change it right go do some stuff that you know how to do think about write a list get a notepad out and start writing a list of the things that you know how to do that other people don't know how to do and go put up flyers go put up ads do whatever it takes to come up with the money that's how you that's how you come up you know get get success and that's how you create money out of thin air so with that being said I want to bring out Maddie my good friend Maddie from New York <laughs> Maddie, share because I know Maddie. You have, um, you know, a lot of. Um, you've had a lot of setbacks too, but you've also overcome those setbacks by just, you know, putting on your thinking cap on and trying to figure out, well, how can I make, how can I come up with this money? I need it now. <laughs> how can I get myself out of this situation? I need it right 
now or at least within the t a week or 24 hours or 48 hours, you need it. So what did you do? Yeah, no, thanks, Lisa. Thank you guys for for listening to my story. Um, actually, uh, I'll go a little back. I won't take too long, but just to give you guys an idea, um, I worked on Wall Street for oh, almost 25 years, and um, I was laid off. And um, I decided that I was not going to let anyone ever take control of my life again that way. So shortly after, I was asked to come back. But at that point, I decided that I wasn't. And I was going to make whatever I had to do, just do whatever I had to do to make it happen. And I, I tapped into the things that I liked. I sat down and I said, you know what? All these years, I've been fitting a mold doing something that I was supposed to do because it paid the bills but I never wanted I never had the opportunity to do what I wanted to do so I started doing photography and I started taking pictures of weddings and children and all of that and then I started I went out and I did some acting <laughs> I started singing and I just did all the things that I always wanted to do whether they paid me enough money or not but I, they were paying me money I just figured out okay let me just test everything and I made it happen. There were times that that I my, my life was going to get shut off. It's like, okay, what am I going to do? I'm not going to go back to Wall Street. I'm not going to go back to that life because I didn't want it anymore. And by I, the way, guys, she was a six-figure earner in Wall Street. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I negotiated legal investment contracts for a living. Okay, that's boring. So I wanted to do something more exciting, and. I decided I was just going to make it happen. And what I realized is most people, they get comfortable because they have a way to make money that comes in every week, every weekend, or whatever, every two weeks. So they don't have that need to go and do or tap into something or tap into your skills because there's no need for it. But when you realize that, hey, you know, there I do have this skill set. Let me tap into what I can do. And that actually led to so many things because I learned how to do marketing online. I decided that I was going to teach other women how to how to market online. I decided that I was going to join the Chamber of Commerce and help other people who didn't have an online presence and teach them. Um, I, I actually joined, I'm one of the speakers on a over 40 female group and a lot of people don't know what it is to have an online presence. So it's like you can get creative if you just allow yourself, if you tap into your into your soul. Think about it. It's like what did you want to do back then when you when when you were a kid? You have the opportunity to do that. And if you have a full time job, I want you to sit down right now and write three things. Just three things that you like or that you've always wanted to do. Just write them down and think about it tonight because what we want, all of us, what we want here is that when we're done with this hangout, we want you to start making money, to tap into that inner power that you have inside and, and make, put it to work. You can email us, you can call us, you can do just, just connect with us if you need help, but you can do this. It's inside of you. I would never, ever, ever go back to Wall Street. I don't care because the taste of freedom was just so amazing. And, and the taste of, of being me and, and being free to be me is just so priceless. And I love, I love teaching. I love teaching other people. I love going around taking pictures. I love all those things. And you have a skill set. And sometimes it just becomes dormant because you've, you've had to keep it dormant because there are other responsibilities, other things that are much easier. And that's one of the problems most people have. They don't do certain things because they don't know how. And if you just take the time to actually do it, you will find out that there is things that you can do. And and you don't give up. Like Mike said, I mean, you don't give up because at the end of every struggle, there's always a rainbow. There's always, life is not all pink. It's actually, it's actually how you look at it. It's the lens that you're looking at life through. So if you have, if you didn't post something correctly, if you didn't put a picture up correctly, or if you didn't know how to blog and you just gave up, 
That's because you're looking at it with a negative lens. Change the lens. Put on a bright lens and you'll see life totally different because it's how you look at it. We can be two different people looking at the same exact situation and both of us are going to look at it differently. It's up to you to decide that you're going to look at it in a positive way and you're going to look at the cup half full, not half empty because everything with everything, there's where there's a will, there's a way. I did it, Lisa did it. We all find found ways to do things. And you can too. I promise you. I promise you, you can too. You all have gifts. God gave us all unique gifts. We all have this unique person inside. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to try things. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Because by making mistakes is how you become beautiful, perfect, or as close to perfect as possible. We don't, we're don't. we not born knowing it all. Remember that. And sometimes we're just afraid to make mistakes because it's just too embarrassing. Who cares? Who cares? Just do it. We all have gifts. Let your gift show. Let it out. I want to see that list. I want to see a list from everyone out there. Make that list. At least three things that you always wanted to do or that you like and figure out. We can figure it out together. Figure out how you can turn those likes, those skills into money. And we, you can do it as early as tomorrow morning or tonight. I promise you that. So I'm going to give it back to you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> the next person I want to bring out is Scott. Actually, Scott and I actually just connected on Facebook today, actually. So I don't know too much about his story. Uh, I know just a little bit about his story because actually we, we are in a prosperity team, and I see some of his videos inside of the back office of our team site. But I'm going to go ahead and bring him out and let him share his struggles and his victories with you. So, Scott, go ahead and take it away. Sure. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, you know, I, you guys just just killed it on that. Uh, that was incredible. Um, you know, one one of the things that you know, I I like to I like to always get feedback from other people and what other people are doing. And when I um, when I assess some stuff, um, I I've I've learned I used to have an ego at one point, um, and and I learned that that got me into a lot of trouble. So since then, I learned to drop my ego. And really sit up and pay attention and take notes from everybody. And have you guys noticed? Uh, comment in the chat down below if you've noticed a common theme that has come up. Every single person has said this. How can I? They keep saying this. How can I? Okay. Now this is something really, really critical. And and you know a lot of times you know you come to these hangouts, you come to these different trainings, and you're looking for something specific, one specific thing. And a lot of times what you're not picking up is the, is the little gold nuggets in between in the language that we're using. See, this is what, what has taken me uh, from, you know, being in a really bad spot to where I am now. <clears throat> and, um, you know, a lot of people have been in this industry. I mean, all of us have been in this industry for a really, really long time. And most people... Uh, most people I talk with, you know, it's like, oh, I've been in, in the home business industry for six months. I, I've been in for a year and I haven't made hardly any money. I made, I've been in for, you know, two, three years, four years. The most I've ever heard somebody that's ever stuck around was about five years. Um, well, guys, a lot of people see my success that I have today. Uh, and, you know, pretty much everybody here on the panel, they're all six-figure earners. But it took me, I got started in this industry in 2001. From 2001 until 2010, I made no money. I lost, oh, so much money. Then, I mean, that was offline marketing. Then, um, you know, coming online, a totally different story. Now, I shortened my story up a lot because... Uh, I don't want to drag it on um, because of all of the countless things that I had to do just to 
just to make things work. So I, I shorten my story up considerably um, for a lot of people for the benefit so that we can usually speed up things and you know somebody's not on a hangout forever or in some of my videos they're like you know five minutes instead of 20 minutes you know to do an intro but um, <clears throat> when I first came online um, I, I first um, I, I was I was searching for a way a better way because I wasn't good at communication with other people I wasn't good at a lot of things and so I I needed to learn a different way and so what I ended up doing was I did a search, you know, how do I attract people to me, rather, you know? And so I, I learned about this concept called attraction marketing, which led me to uh, somebody that a lot of people know, uh, Mike Dillard. And I went through his product, spent a lot of money with his product that I didn't have, right? I didn't have that money. So what did I do? Well, I maxed out credit cards. Um, I uh, sold stuff on Craigslist. Um, there is at one point where um, we decided to uh, there, there, there's so many different things that, that I had to do um, that it all kind of the time frames and when they happen um, I, it's almost a blur because um, there is at some points where I was just flat broke there is at other points where I thought I had some money and then something happened and well there it goes again you know <laughs> and so it was always this constant game that I always had to play, and um, I remember uh, when I uh, when I got hooked up with David Wood, um, I he, there was a, an opportunity to meet him uh, at a marketing event. Well, I <clears throat> I didn't have any money um, to go to the event, so uh, but but I knew um, after after spending. What was it? Uh, a whole month just to get my first blog um, running, and it still didn't work right. Uh, and then trying to do my first blog post, and it took me four and a half hours to do my first blog post. And then um, I think I deleted after after that. I, I I screwed up like the whole database, and I'm just like pulling my hair. I'm like, gosh, what? Why can't I get this to work? You know? And then um, trying to do sales funnels, and had no clue what I was doing. Um, burning the midnight oil, oh my gosh. I, I literally, uh, guys, at one point in my business, um, I was drinking so much coffee. Uh, I had a lot of people really, really concerned. I could, not, I could not stay awake without coffee. I had to always drink it, so I switched to caffeine pills, and I got addicted to caffeine pills. There was a point where I couldn't actually stay awake unless I was having a caffeine pill. That's how hard I was working, trying to figure all this stuff out. Because I had no money, I had to. I had to work. I had to do all this stuff. So I'd stay up, and I mean, I'd work, and I'd work, and I'd work. And then, um, gosh, when when uh, when I finally was able to, you know, I wanted to go to this marketing event because I knew that if I just was would attend an event and I got pictures with some of these leaders and I got videos and all this stuff, that I just knew that that it would be kind of this turning point and so when somebody came to my blog or saw my content or something I'd have some some validity that you know hey I, I had all these experiences over 10 years or you know nine years of all these failure well they're not failures they're um, their feedback and I learned that those are actually things that I learned over the course of time because I wasn't growing and developing as a person which is why they were why I couldn't succeed is because I used to think it was an external thing when it was really an internal thing and it, and it was I had to work on myself and I see I didn't get that um, and so when when uh, the opportunity came that I could go to this first marketing event um, I had to sell um, a a uh, thing that I treasured. Um, it, it, it meant freedom to me. It meant everything to me. Um, it was a, uh, a 2002 Triumph TT600. It was a motorcycle. I worked so hard to get it. I, I did so many different things. Uh, so many, uh, the story around it, I mean, it was flown in from Great Britain. It was actually, uh, I, I bought it down in Portland. I, I took a plane trip down to Portland, picked it up, rode the thing all the way back, uh, Took it off the the shore showroom floor, brand new, and broke it in all the way back home from from Portland. Uh, yeah, I mean this thing was just amazing, guys. I, I sold that, 
to to attend my first ever marketing event, you know. And since then, um, that was like my my arrival point where I was just like, okay, I, you know, I'm 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 obviously serious about this. So I've done a lot of different things. I've tapped into, um, you know, I I too am a graphic designer. So and whenever there was any um, time, I remember doing some work for Dave Wood uh, when uh, when we were kind of getting together all the the stuff, all the components for. Uh, for uh, the launch of Empower Network, and he hired me because he knew me, and he knew I, I could use some extra money, so he hired me to do some graphic design work for him. Uh, and so a lot of these connections that you can make, right? Um, another thing is, um, you know, I, these are like skill sets that, I mean, you have actual skill sets that you can can tap into. I mean, we've already heard from, from Lisa, we've heard from Maddie, heard from Mike, um, and one of the things uh, that, that I actually did is um, there's been times where I've, I've borrowed from credit cards, I've borrowed from people, I've made deals with people um, just to, uh, just to you know, hey, I'll, let me borrow this much and I'll pay you back over this time frame type thing, <laughs> you know, other people's money. Um, gosh, there, there is actually one point um, I... This was uh, when it was really desperate times. Um, I, I and these are just ideas, guys. I mean, I am loaded full of ideas because most of most of my uh, my growing up, my childhood, watching my parents, um, a lot of people that we knew. Um, this was just this was normal for us. It was normal. You, you had to struggle. You had to do something. You had to figure out a way to make it work if you really wanted it. Right? It's exactly what Lisa uh, said. When uh, when she was like when when she gave the the example of um, you know what would your child you know if your child was in danger what would you do? Well, see, all of a sudden it comes up with all of a sudden you can come up with so many ideas because it's important enough to you, right? It's important enough to you to take that to take that leap, and it's and and you know speaking of taking a leap, you know one thing that that I really learned um, I actually wrote this down as a note. Uh, to remind myself, you know, one of the one of the most amazing books. You know, a lot of us talk about all these different books. You know, Think and Grow Rich. I mean, we're we're probably going to hear some of that. You know, uh, you know, with with Paul when he comes up. Uh, but <laughs> he starts laughing. But you know, there's a lot of these different books. For me personally, one of the most one of the most pro profound books. Um, I I didn't read it. I I I'm very much an auditory type learner, so I, I like to listen to stuff. And um, I've got the audiobook called The Four Hour Work Week. Now if you've never you know read or listened to that book, I highly encourage you to get it. Um, there was so many things that just completely did this quantum mind shift for me. Um, and one of the biggest things that that he said that really, really hit home with me is is he says um, the thing that you're most afraid to do is the exact thing you should be doing. And you know when <clears throat> when I when I heard when I heard that, um, <laughs> it was uh, I, I've been telling so many people uh, when I first started on this whole you know creating wealth journey that um, I, I I told everybody that I'd be retired before I was 40 years old. I would not be working for somebody before I was you know by the time I was 40 years old. And uh, my my friends, my family, every single person laughed at me. Uh, I mean, my I was the I'm the baby of our of our family, and our lineage is um, Polish and Bulgarian. And um, the it's the traditional ways where the oldest is the wisest and the buck of the family, and the youngest is like basically worthless and the gum on the bottom of your shoe. Well, I happen to be the absolute youngest. I am the baby. Um, therefore, um, I was to be seen, not heard. Um, my voice didn't matter. My opinions didn't matter. Um, who I was as a person didn't matter. At one point, I know this is getting a little off topic, um, but you know, at one point, I remember uh, it was actually Easter Sunday. Um, we we had a, a get together at my. Um, I was playing downstairs with my cousins and everything, and I was—I happened to be the last one to come up because I—I've always been kind of all over the place and in my own little world half the time. And so I—I 
I come upstairs and uh, you know everybody's there, everybody's happy in a good mood, and and we hear this earth shattering. How dare you! And everybody just like silence, and we're like, what's going on? And he says, and he looked right at me, uh, called me out in front of every single person there. He says, how dare you enter a room and not acknowledge me first? And, you know, I mean, I, I was like eight, I think. You know, so you talk about, you know, self-esteem and personal growth and, and all these things, and those things that, that happen really stifle a person. So when you start going and growing yourself as a person, you start tapping into things and, and hanging around people like we have here who uplift you and lift you up and, and recognize the, the powerful person that you have inside. Because when you're down and out and things are, are not looking very bright, I tell you, those, those things, now I look back, those are my biggest drivers. It's like, I want to, come on, give me more. I want to show you what I can do. And that's when you dig in and you have your support center here that lifts you up and helps you. Um, so sorry I got off track a little bit there. Um, but so, so just to, um, to kind of get back on where we're, where we're going with the things that you can do. Um, I actually, uh, I recorded a, a really good training video because of all my previous experiences. You know, at one point in time, I actually called and negotiated with my mortgage company and said, hey, can I defer my payment for a while uh, just so that I can take care of some things and then maybe make it up? And they said, absolutely. And so I actually called my mortgage company and they worked with me because my payment was so big and then I used that money because I didn't have the money. I used that money to fund marketing and start making sales, make stuff happen, and then I, I stretched it out and then made it up on the back end, right? So there's creative things that you can do um, to really to really get you know pretty much you know anywhere, and and it's exactly what um, what Lisa said. You know, if it's important enough to you, that's the biggest thing because you know, and 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 big big thing, a big eye opener here, guys. Okay. Uh, this is something that uh, is very humbling for me when I really looked at this was, um, you know, when you look at how old you are right now, okay, and, you know, whatever opportunity it is that, that you're looking at, you know, you can always click on the link down below and, and get started with us for $25, right? Now, if you don't have $25, let me, let me you know, let me just kind of take a step back and let me ask you, do you think that that's a problem? Think about that. How old are you right now? You don't have to, obviously, you don't have to say anything, but I'm 36 years old, okay? Now, just for me as an example, I have a daughter, I have a mortgage, I have a car, I have all these different things that, that all, all, you know, take money out, right? <laughs> if I don't have $25 at 36, and I've been working since I was 16, what does that say? says you got to start looking at your finances and managing your money a little bit better, right? And now this isn't a course in, in money management or anything like that, but one of the best things that you can do is start hanging around with people who know a little bit more, learn from, from them, from some of the things that we're actually talking about right now, and tap into your creativity and start making more money and then do something good with that money, right? Instead of going out and buying a new pair of shoes or, you know, going out to lunch, you know, five times a week, let's use your creativity. Sometimes it's not so much making money, it's, it's looking at the current money that you're spending, right? There's a point in my, in my life where I looked at saying, okay, um, if I'm, you know, if, if I'm uh, not making money on how I spend my money, then I'm just not going to spend my money. There was a point where I was in such survival mode that I would only buy the bare bones basics unless it was going to make me money, right? I mean, so, you know, no fun stuff, no anything, you know? I mean, I, I remember, you know, John Chapman, another guy, uh, amazing story with, with him too, right? I mean, he had to downgrade his cable just to 
be able to um, make ends meet and be able to do this whole internet marketing thing. And now look at him. You know, he, he makes like I think ten grand a month minimum. I think I don't know. Uh, you know, official income disclaimer down below. But um, so you know, there's anything that you can do. Uh, and when when you're when you're down, guys, I I struggled for. Imagine not making money and working your butt off and trying every single thing you possibly can for 10 years. If you can do that, then come talk to me and complain that you don't, that, you know, that, that then you can, then you can, you know, throw in a towel, whatever. But, uh, you know, that, that's just, I, ho I hope that helps. <laughs> I kind of went on a little bit of a rant there, but uh, it's, it's a pretty passionate topic for me too, so. Thank you so much, Scott. It's always great to hear, um, you know, new, fresh stories. I know your, your story is not fresh on the team, but to me it's a fresh story because it's actually the first time I'm hearing it, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that's hearing it for the first time as well, all of our stories, really. Um, so thank you for sharing it. I appreciate you. No problem. All right. So the final person that I want to bring out is Paul Hutchings and you know a lot of people we, we know who he is. He does the morning call um, called the Think and Grow Rich call that hundreds of people tap into Monday through Friday I believe it is right Paul, Monday through Friday hundreds of people tap into him and you know what he does it out of the kindness of his heart he doesn't have to do this just like Mike when he does his trainings every single day at noon you know his over-the-shoulder training where he's actually teaching you something Paul actually comes on these calls every single morning and provides a ton of value on the Think and Grow Rich calls um, but I want to hear from from him and uh, Paul take it away <laughs> Hey, Lisa, thank you. Can you hear me okay? I hear you just fine. I, I got to tell everyone, uh, I was on the whole hangout. My wife has some dinner for me, so I was pausing out my screen so I could eat. I, did, I didn't think you guys want to see me. So anyway, hey, listen, guys, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing that's happening tonight. Uh, we, we've got a group of people who have won their freedom, and they come on this hangout, to share their stories and to share their lessons and to share how they've won that freedom and it's a beautiful thing and one of the things that I think you might be seeing as you listen especially to me is that you don't have to be perfect to be successful you can be very flawed you can be a you know a, a typical human being and if you have the 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 dream and the determination you can do great things and another great thing I was I was reading in the comments as everyone was talking and there were so many supportive comments. There were so many positive things being said about the things that were being shared by the speakers. So we really have a great group of people gathered here to, together tonight. And I just wanted to commend the people who have shared thus far. And I also wanted to commend you. You know, I'm, I'm going to speak to you through the camera, right? Because I know you're a real person and I know that you're, you're here tonight because you want to learn something that's going to help you move forward in a better way. And I want to commend you for that because it's not, that's not an average thing to do, to, to sacrifice your evening and come on a hangout where you can spend time with people who have won their freedom, who are you know six-figure earners and multiple six-figure earners, to come and listen. It's not an average thing to do. And I always want to congratulate you and point that out and let you know that the fact that you're on this hangout tonight literally means something so very special about you. It means you're on the right path of doing things differently, of getting around people who can share information with you that will help you move forward in life in a more powerful way. And that's really my intention for the few minutes that I have here tonight, if I don't get distracted by Scott's muscular body here <laughs> next to my face on the, on the hangout. <laughs> the internet's sexiest marketer right there. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I want, I want to share some things with you guys tonight that have helped me along my journey. I want to share with you, you know, the topic is how to create money out of thin air. And i got to be honest with you, when I saw that was the topic, I sent it out and, you know, invited, invited the people on my list. And I was a little bit nervous because I was like, how do you create money out of thin air? And I was like, hmm, well, maybe I'll learn from these guys on the panel how to do it. And, and the more I thought about it, the more I realized that that is actually the only way to create money. It's the only way to create money. 
how do you create money out of thin air? First, you've got a dream. You know what you want. You see it in your imagination. Then you add ingredients that are invisible. These, this is like pulling stuff out of thin air. Uh, determination, persistence, getting knocked down, getting back up again, creativity, enthusiasm. You're developing all of this stuff and you're pulling it out of thin air and you're putting it into this big mixing bowl and you're mixing it up and over time <clears throat> what that does is it produces amazing results, produces a lifestyle of freedom, produces a 10, 15, 20, 3, 4, 5 thousand dollar monthly income that will come in month in, month out, whether you work or not, right? That was the dream for me. I wanted to be free and that's how you do it. You create it out of thin air. You have the dream, you mix in the essential ingredients and you give it time and that was the other reason that I was a little nervous about the topic <clears throat> because I know that sometimes people you know, they, they see us send out these, these emails like, uh, you know, we're going to teach you how to create money out of thin air. And, <clears throat> and I even wrote in my email, it's so easy that a puppet could do it. And I had this, like, funny-looking, you know, hand puppet. And what we don't want to do is we don't want people to, to confuse what, what we mean. It, it's easy compared to everything else you could be doing to earn income. But that doesn't mean that it's easy because it's gonna take work it's gonna take persistence it's gonna take frustration it's gonna take growth um, but it's easy compared to the other things that you can do to make money right and we're on here talking about what what other options are there so what are some of the things that I've done to make money in my life when I was in high school my first job was washing dishes at a Chinese restaurant I would do that during the evenings and then uh, before I would go to that job I would go to a car wash and I would wash cars so in the daytime I'm washing cars and at nighttime I'm washing dishes and I actually remember one time I was sleeping at night and I had this dream. You ever have those dreams like you wake up in the morning and it's like, did I sleep? Like you were dreaming all night long and it was like you didn't even get any sleep. Well this dream I had was that I was at the car wash and I was washing cars and then in between cars I was washing dishes in the water at the car wash and it was like I worked all day and all night and all day and it was terrible, right? not a thing you want to do to make money right so I learned at a young age that there's got to be a better way so I started buying into what uh, my, my teachers were telling me and what they told me was go to school get a good education and then get a good job and live happily ever after anyone else heard that story before I was like okay sounds like it's better than washing cars sounds like it's better than washing dishes so I went to college I got a degree I worked hard in school. I, I, I worked hard. I studied hard. I got good grades. I got out of college, and I don't say this to brag. I just It is what it is. I actually graduated school with a 3.98 GPA, and I thought, dude, game over. It, it is done. You know, summa cum laude, like, yeah, come on, world, bring it on. And guess what happened? My first job, 11 bucks an hour in a call center with a 3.98 GPA, a business degree, summa cum laude, 11 bucks an hour in a call center. I was like, what? Really? All right, well, roll up the sleeves and get to work. So I start working in this corporate environment to get money, right? The things we do to get money, working in this corporate environment. I have an interview one time. My boss, I'm wanting a promotion, right? Because I got this degree and I want to make more than 11 bucks an hour and I want to progress. So I go in for this interview and the boss is like, well, Paul, uh, why do you think you deserve this promotion? And tell me some of your strengths. And so I told him some things that I thought were good about me. Like I said, I said, well, you know, I think I've got passion. I think I'm passionate about what I'm doing. We get to the end of the interview, and he says, uh, you don't got the job. And he says, can I give you some feedback? And I said, sure, go ahead. And he looks me in the eye, and he says, Paul, you don't have passion. <laughs> you don't have passion. And I sat there in that chair with my boss looking at me making 11 bucks an hour with a college degree and I thought do I have to take this is this is this really what uh, is this really what has been planned for me is this really what my life is gonna you know turn out to be and I decided that I wasn't gonna believe that I decided I wasn't gonna believe what my boss had to say I decided I was gonna continue to to work and believe in myself I experienced other stuff you know in the corporate environment getting shipped out of getting shipped out of uh, out of my home, I'd just gotten married to my beautiful wife who made me this awesome dinner. We, we were having our first year wedding anniversary 
and my boss comes to me and he says, Paul, we need you to go down to Phoenix and do a meeting for the company. Our first year wedding anniversary. And I said, um, I said, well, let me talk to my wife because it's my first year wedding anniversary. And he says, all right, go ahead. So I said, honey, boss wants me to do this. She says, well, you better do it. It's your job. So I fly out of town, down to Phoenix. I remember getting done with the meetings. Saturday night, I was sitting in a steakhouse all alone, all by myself with my dinner, my first year wedding anniversary. I pick up my phone and I call my wife and I was like, happy anniversary, honey. I miss you. I love you. You know, sitting here all by myself eating dinner. And then a month later, I'm in my, comp in my, my six month review and the boss says, Paul, you're doing good. He says, he says, we're worried about your commitment to the company. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, remember a month or so ago we wanted you to go down to Phoenix and you hesitated. I said, yeah, it was my anniversary, my first year wedding anniversary. He says, Paul, when you hesitated, that was showing us that you weren't committed to the company. And I sat there in that office and that experience with other experiences like that and I said, do I have to take this? Is this what my life is going to be? And the answer that I kept coming up with for myself was, no, you're meant for more, Paul. You're meant to have your freedom. You're meant to do great things with your life. So I rejected all that stuff. I rejected it. And then I got introduced to the home business profession. I, this idea, pipeline money. Uh, you know, uh, Lisa talked about doing offline networking. That's what I got introduced to. And guys, last Saturday, uh, I was cleaning out my garage. Uh, you know, pulling out all this old stuff, and and I found some stuff that I want to share with you guys right now because we're talking about what we did to get money, right? Uh, first thing I want to show you guys, can you? I don't know if you guys can. Uh, can you see what that says, Lisa? <laughs> yeah. Memory you ever seen jogger. one of these before? Yeah. Memory jogger. The memory what, what, what jogger. What is this? Yes, this is, a, this is a thing that you write names about. down on, right? Of people you're going to contact about your business. You know it, right? Check this out. This is, my, oh, I don't want to show you the phone numbers. My very first top 25 prospect list. Okay? Guess, guess, I called every single one of these people. Guess how much money I made after one year of calling people and making lists? Zero dollars, right? You guys want to talk about making lists? Uh, who was it? Maddie said, make a list. She says, go make a list of three things. Right, and she and and I I I got a little uh, nervous, and I was like, oh no, is she gonna ask me to make a list of all my friends and family? Why, guys? Check this out. These are all the lists that I've made. I, I seriously have a stack. This is this is contact lists, people that I've contacted about my business over the years. Right? Why? Because I wanted to be free, and I was willing to do whatever it took. And did it all work? Heck no, it didn't work. <laughs> a lot of it didn't work. Hey, check this out. I found this in my garage. I don't know if you guys can see that. These are, these are called sticker labels. Oh, yeah. And you see my, first, my name, my phone number, my website. Guys, you know what? I, <laughs> I did the most ridiculous things. I, in fact, I, just, I have the stamper that I just threw in the garbage today. But I would stamp my name and my phone number and my web address and I would paste them everywhere trying to get people to build my business. Guess what? Did this work for me? <laughs> this didn't work. But you know what? When I was looking at this today, I want to and I want to share with you guys some marketing stuff, right? As I'm sharing with you a little bit of my story um, because all these are lessons. You hear all the struggles that Scott went through and Maddie went through and Lisa and Mike, they, they, they talk about the struggles that they went through. I remember listening to a top earner at, a, at an event a few months ago his name's Aaron, and he said, if you lose, make sure you don't lose the lesson too. If you lose, make sure you don't lose the lesson too. What does that mean? Well, check this out. My web address, letsgosyntech.com. Syntech was the name of the company that I was promoting. When I pulled this out of my box the other day, I said, that is a ridiculously stupid web address. <laughs> Why? Because it says nothing to the prospect about what my website's about. It has the company name on it, and it says, let's go company, right? 
What, in marketing, one of the things that I've learned, fortunately, because I ran into people like her on the, on the panel tonight, and I've learned a little bit about marketing, and one of the things you want to do in good marketing is you want to understand who you're targeting. Who are you trying to help? Who are you trying to assist? Who are you trying to reach? So now, if I make a web address, I don't put the company name in it. I think about my target market, right? When I, when I first started doing this on the internet, my target market was network marketers. So I learned from doing a bad web address to now when I target network marketers, one of my web addresses is MLMInternetExplosion.com. Why? Because that's my target market. It's a much better domain. It speaks to the, to the customer, right? It speaks to the, tar to the mark. I learned it from doing things wrong, right? That's a, so I made lists. I made stickers. Uh, what, what else did I do? Uh, creating money out of thin air. I want to show you guys uh, one other thing here, and, and, and then I'll uh, uh, probably get, get, get close to closing out here. This is, a, this is what's called a major definite purpose document. Uh, if you've read Think and Grow Rich, Scott, you know, Scott's like, Paul's going to talk about Think and Grow Rich, probably, because I always do, right? Because the book changed my life. But one of the things that Napoleon Hill teaches is that you've got to have a definite major purpose. You've got to be clear on what you want. What are you doing in business? What are you, what's your outcome, right? Well, I learned early on from having these experiences in the corporate world that I just wanted to be free. So my very first definite major purpose says this, and this was written back in like 2005. I am in the process of acquiring 3,000 monthly residual income and will complete this goal by June 27, 2006. In exchange for this money, I will give my gifts of faith, planning, action, persistence to provide. And then here's what I did. This is how we learn, guys. I had no clue what I was doing. So what did I say I was going to do? I was going to provide housing through rentals and lease options. I was going to share my network marketing business with as many people as I could. I was going to start a concierge service. I was going to start a hot chocolate stand. And I was going to do all this stuff, right? None of it worked. But you know what did work? Creating money out of thin air. Having the dream of $3,000 a month. Learning what didn't work and persisting through. Plowing through picking up the lessons along the way, continuing forward in my journey, right? Until back in 2010, real quick, um, at, you know, at the end of my rope, honestly, I'd been trying things that weren't working for so stinking long. I, I was frustrated. I was living in a single wide trailer house. Uh, there was one night I was putting my two kids to bed. I, uh, speaking of my kids, um, I found this today. Following, following in daddy's footsteps. It's my seven-year-old. He's got his little footprints on here. Uh, th this little kid, man, he, uh, he loves his dad. He wants to be just like dad. Dad's got a laptop. Guess what? He's got my old laptop. Dad's got an iPad. He's got an iPad case that looks like an iPad, but it's not really an iPad. But he thinks it's an iPad, and he says it's an iPad. Dad's got a phone. He's got my old phone. He's packing around a bag with all the electronics in it. Dad gets a Kindle last week. What does he do? He goes and finds a little notebook that looks like a Kindle, and, and, and he's got it, right? It's my seven-year-old son, Caden. He wants to be like Dad. I want to give my kids somebody, somebody that they can be proud of. I want to be an example. 2010, struggling. It's not working. Put my seven-year-old and my five-year-old to bed one night. And I'm, I'm literally looking at their faces in the back room of this single wide trailer house. Nothing's working. And I don't know what else to do. I, I literally had tears coming down my face. I knelt down and I prayed to God for an answer because I'd been working on this home business stuff for five years and it wasn't working. I was in a worse situation actually. I'd, I'd quit my job because I was going for my dream. Uh, I'd been through 14 different companies. Uh, I had a couple hundred bucks a month coming in, right? And I needed an answer, and I prayed to God. And what happened, out of the prayer, I'll shorten the story, um, I was prompted to begin a serious study of Think and Grow Rich, which is why Scott said I was going to talk about it, because I always talk about it. And that book gave me one piece of the formula, which is the mindset. There's a mindset to success, Right? Like listening to Lisa talk about all the things she's done. She was a clown for heaven's sakes, guys. It's like this lady today is prospecting me on Facebook for a business. She's like, what do you do? And I was like, well, 
I'm a professional home business on entrepreneur. She's like, well, what does that mean? What do you do? And I wanted to say, that means I do whatever the heck it takes to make money and be free for my fam. That's really what it, whatever it takes. That's what it means, right? Whatever it takes. And Lisa does whatever it takes, and Scott does, and Mike does, and Maddie does. We do whatever it takes for as long as it takes for us to learn the lessons that we need to learn. So 2010, praying, right? Get this answer. Read the book, Think and Grow Rich. I learned from that and applying what that book taught how to have faith, how to have faith in my goal and how to have faith in myself. Critical, but that was only one piece of the equation, right? The equation is mindset plus skill set times performance equals results. So the other part, back in 2010, here's what I discovered in addition to the mindset. I discovered the power of blogging. I discovered the power of target marketing. I discovered the power of taking my message and putting it in front of the person who wants it so bad they can't even sleep at night they want it that bad. That's what a blog can do. Did you know that? And you're on this page listening to these stories. Why are we here? We're here because we love you. We're here because we believe in you. We're here because we want you to have a dream. We're here because we want you to be passionate about life. But we're also here because we want to help you use the power of blogging to change your life. We want to help you use the power of blogging to take whatever business you have. It can be a network marketing company. can be a traditional business. Whatever it is, we want to help you take the power of blogging and put your message in front of the people who literally are looking for you. And I'm telling you, they're out there. There are people out there right now who want what you have. There are people out there right now who need to hear the message that you've got to give. There are people out there right now, right now. What time is it? 7.18 where I am. Right now, this very minute, there are people out there in the world that have their credit cards out they're looking to join, they're, looking to, they're, they're wanting to buy your products and services, and the only reason they're not slapping their credit card down right now, punching in their numbers, their name, their expiration date, is because you maybe haven't learned the marketing lessons that you need to learn and develop the skills that you need to, to develop so that you can take what you've got and match it up with the people who want it. That's the other piece that I learned in 2010 through the blog. And we actually have the most phenomenal, outstanding, fast, optimized, easy blog that you could possibly use. And you can actually grab it if you don't already have it by clicking the link below this video, right? That's the first step. You've got to have the tool. But then the other thing you've got with these people on this Hangout right now and the community of leaders that we're partnered up with is you've got an ongoing community of people who will stand by and help you develop the skills you need to develop if you're going to be free in your life and in your business. And I'll tell you what happened for me back in 2010 after that prayer, after discovering the mindset, after learning and applying the skills. All of a sudden, I went from failure in 14 companies over five years within about six months. I say all of a sudden, it took me about six months, right? Right? It took me about six months. All of a sudden, I start seeing emails come out from my network marketing company recognizing the top sales leaders for the month. Guess what? My name was on the list. Paul Hutchings was on the list for the first time. I'm sitting there in my trailer house. I'm working my blog. I'm seeing customers coming in. These emails are coming out. I'm like, yes, finally. It's happening, right? It's happening because I learned the mindset and the skill set and I got around the people that were going to lift me up and teach me and instruct me. And I'm telling you right now, my friend, I'm telling you right now, if you're not a part of our community right now, you have an opportunity. I'm so passionate about this. Right now, you have an opportunity to click the link below this video and get your blog set up, right? That's number one. You get the blog. But here's the bigger picture getting your blog set up by clicking the link below this video, it's like you're reaching down your hand, you're opening the door, and you're saying, enough of where I've been, enough of not having what I want, enough of my boss suppressing me, enough of me wanting to give my wife and my kids the best of life and not being able to do it, enough of me being out of town on my 
wedding anniversary, you're opening the door, you're saying goodbye to all of the stuff that's held you back, and you're opening the door by clicking the link below this video, and you're stepping into something so much more beautiful. You're stepping into a mindset of faith. You're stepping into a plethora of skills that can empower you to free yourself. And then what happens when you free yourself and you have that, for me it was $3,000 a month, right? And then, it, and then it's grown from there, which I'm so very grateful for. But what happens then, it, it, at least it seems like it's probably going to happen because I, I believe it's happened for Lisa and Natty and Scott and Mike. What happens when you win your freedom is, is you start to, uh, you, it, it, there's this term called magnificent obsession. You guys heard that term, magnificent obsession. And magnificent obsession for me means that my freedom tastes so good to me. Getting up in the morning and doing what I want to do. Having breakfast with my family when I want to have breakfast with my family. Going out and playing with my kids at 3 o'clock in the afternoon because I want to play with my kids. Reading with my children, right? That freedom tastes so good to me that I want as many people as I possibly can help to have that freedom too. And that's why we're all in this hangout tonight. That's why all these people are here tonight because we have a magnificent obsession and that is to help you be free. And the only thing stopping you right now, if you haven't joined yet, is to click the button below the video, get your blog set up, whoever your sponsor is, whoever invited you to this page, they'll contact you, they'll plug you into the additional resources, and you will be on the road to a whole new life, my friend. It's a beautiful thing. I challenge you to do it. I love you. I believe in you. I respect you. Thanks for being here tonight. Keep coming back. Keep coming back, my friend. I love you. And guys, thanks for the time. I'll turn it back over to Lisa. Wow. See, that's why I saved you for last. <laughs> well, it's You're so funny. Kind. Am I? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's yep. so funny because when you started showing, um, you know, the stuff that you used to do, I actually have um, some flyers here. That I was doing <laughs> for my network marketing company. In fact, I have a whole entire bag full of flyers <laughs> that I never even finished giving out. And guess what? This is one of three bags. I actually gave out, I finished the whole two bags, gave out literally, I don't know, it was like 3,000 flyers, and not one person <laughs> ever called me back. I don't know if it was my marketing. I thought my flyers were pretty darn badass, but no one ever called me back or anything. Another thing that I have here is a box of business cards, right? When I was doing the network marketing stuff online, that didn't work. Um, but what did work for, for some re weird reason is when I learned the skill sets of internet marketing. When I learned how to you know, generate the leads online, how to position myself for success when I started creating, you know, working on my mindset. Uh, you know, someone, someone actually, I, I posted something on Facebook today. I can't remember what it was, but somebody posted a comment um, on my, I think it was an image that I posted, and they, they said, I'm all in. How, oh, you know what, what it was? I took a screenshot of my back office income, and of course I put the income disclaimer on there, um, of what I made for the past two days. And someone posted on that image and said, I'm all in too, but how do I do that? See, that's the problem. And if you guys don't know what all in means, because you're not in Empower Network and you haven't clicked the link below yet, what all means is, is that you're all in mentally. You're all in with buying all the products, because when you buy the products, two things happen. Number one, you position yourself to make more money. And number two, you equip yourself with the education that you need to create results that, that we are having here in our, on our team right now. And so once you start doing that, then 
you know, then that is when you start creating success. One of my great friends, Barbie Figueroa, who couldn't make it on the Hangout tonight, I actually invited her to hang out with us tonight, but she couldn't make it because she had prior arrangements with her family, family first, right? So she went out with her family, has, is having a good time with her family. But one of the things that she used to tell me, we were in the actual, uh, actually in the same network marketing company before we started using this system, and one thing she always used to tell me every time I used to say, you know, gosh, like I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. I'm, I'm showing up every day. I'm doing this and nothing is really happening. What could it be? Like what is the missing puzzle? And she always used to say, honey, it's not what you're doing. It's who you're being. And I used to sit there and say, well, I think I'm being the person that I'm supposed to be being but the reality was was that I was not I was being something or someone that I didn't even know who I was being I was trying to be something else I was trying to be something other than me and so when I click that link below that you're looking at right now when I did that right and I started plugging into the training her old thing that she used to tell me which was it's not what you're doing, it's who you're being. When I started plugging into the training and getting on Paul's calls and, you know, really plugging into the mindset thing, that's when it clicked. And I realized that everything that I was doing, the reason why my income was capped and it was going fluctuating up and down at that moment, which was a little over a year ago, is because I wasn't being me. I wasn't being the true Lisa Torres. Right. So the moment I started changing that and being me, if you look at my wall, you'll see I do crazy off the wall stuff. My videos are outrageous. I make people's joys drop. I make them laugh. I make them cry. That's me. That's who I am. Right. And the moment I started doing that, my income was going up. It was like magic. So I want to encourage you today. I know that went a little bit off topic on how to create money out of thin air. Actually, no, that actually is. Be yourself. That's how you create money out of thin air, right? That's how you create money out of thin air. Start being yourself. Start plugging into the trainings. Start plugging into rubbing, you know, rubbing elbows and locking arms with people that have and do and, and have more than you. You know, one thing that um, I always used to say all the time is that, when you look around you, right, the chair that you're sitting in right now, the laptop that you're look, watching this hangout at right now, this actual hangout itself, right, Facebook, YouTube, this book, my cell phone, like everything, everything that you see around you was once a thought, right? Somebody had that thought and manifested it into reality. Why? Because they had the vision and they took action on it and then created it, right? And then now they're billionaires. Now they're making money, right? Whoever, I bought this book from Barnes and Nobles for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something like that. This person had a vision to put some inspirational kind of words on here to create the book and sell it at Barnes and Nobles and wherever else they're selling it. Now this person is making money. So when we talk about creating money out of thin air, like the stuff that I share, the five things that I did, the three things that my husband did, the things that everybody else on the panel did, you know, I could go on and on and on about the things that you could be doing that, you know, maybe you're struggling right now and you just don't have the money to even get started. You probably don't even have the $25, right? I already listed some things that you can do. You can actually open up your book right now, grab a pen, and start listing. Maddie already gave you an assignment. She said, write down three, but you know what? I challenge you to write down 20. <laughs> write down 20 things that you could do starting today, or it's starting tomorrow because it's getting late, and I know you guys have family and you want to go to bed. But starting, tomorrow, starting tonight, write that list, and tomorrow you take action on it, right? And it could be, you know, sometimes you have to, um, you know, humble yourself, 
right? Sometimes you have to humble yourself and do things that you would have never thought that you would be doing because you're high and mighty. Meanwhile, you're broke. Sometimes you have to humble yourself and come down to earth. So a couple of more things off the top of my head, right? I don't know. Maybe you know how to wash windows really good and you're broke. You better find out who in your neighborhood needs their windows washed because somebody in your neighborhood needs clean windows and you know how to do it just just good right somebody needs their house cleaned right maybe there's somebody who just works all day and they're working at a nine-to-five and you're home and you're struggling trying to make it paycheck to paycheck or commission check to a uh, commission check to commission check and you're just trying to make that extra money to gather up that extra money but you just don't know how and you're using every excuse in the book to try to do it right guess what you know how to clean a house somebody's at work all day and needs help cleaning their house go do it humble yourself and go do it because it's not gonna last forever you're not gonna be cleaning houses forever mowing the lawn somebody's at work all day there's an elderly person that needs their mow their lawn mowed go do it right go do it humble yourself and go do it especially if you are on a bind and you don't have the money right now to do what it takes to create your dreams or whatever walking a dog there's people that leave their dogs at home all day. There's tons of people in your neighborhood right now that need their dogs to be walked while they're at work. Well, guess what? You're at home all day. Maybe you're at home all day. I don't know what it is. Do something. So I could sit here and literally come up with probably 500 different things that I would do if I was in a situation where I needed to come up with the money. I would literally fill this book up with things that I need to be doing, and I would go do it especially if I was in a bind. So stop making excuses. All the income that you ever need can be created out of thin air. If you just use your thinking cap on, humble yourself, do whatever you have to take for that moment, have a garage sale, sell a car, sell some old stuff, I mean sell a bike, right? Like, like Scott, he got rid of one of his favorite treasures. <laughs> do what it takes. Do what it takes. That's it. Right? That's it. So what I want you to do is, so by now, you should realize that, wow, hearing all these stories, these people are real. These people have humbled themselves to do certain things, you know, not things that are unethical, but ethical things to make things happen in their lives, right? By now, you should realize that. So what I want you to click, what I want you to do now is click the link below. And if you don't have $25 to get started, guess what? I'll give you a trick that you can do starting tonight to come up with the $25 so that you can dump that money in your bank account tomorrow morning and get started. You want to know what that is? Go inside your car. Go inside your drawers. Go check your coat pockets. Go check your pants pockets. Go look inside your sofa. Go look around the house in the corner. Go look under the sofa. Gather up some change. And I promise you that you will come up with $25 to get started tonight. Really, there is no excuse. So anyway, with that being said, thank you so much, everybody, for being on the Hangout with us tonight. Um, we will see you same time, same place, next Wednesday at 8 p.m. We love you, and we want nothing but for you to prosper. That's why we're called Prosperity Team right we want nothing more than for you to prosper in life why because we know that you have what it takes and we know that you deserve it and so does your family because you deserve it and we love you thank you for watching and we'll see you next week Mwah. Mwah. <laughs>